May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You see that? The Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Acts 2, 37 and 42. Um, I want us to talk about uh, what's on your light page. So what do you learn about light in verse 7? Uh, in your notebook, just write 1 John 1, 7, dash, God is light. What else do we learn about light in that verse? We have to walk in it. We walk in that light. We abide in that light. We stay in fellowship with him. The if word is there. There it is. Yeah. And it yes. says yes. if we do, we have fellowship with yeah. one another and the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. His son cleanses us from our sin. With him, I want to walk in that light so that I can have good, strong, healthy fellowship with others. Are the light of the world. So I wrote in mine, we are the light of the world. What? I thought Jesus was the light. It's saying we are the light? What? We kind of talked about that last week. What are we? We're a reflection of his light when we walk in fellowship with him. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. It gives light to everyone you touch. Everywhere you go, His light, if we're walking in that light, that light follows us, and it splashes out on everyone <coughs> around us. It makes us different. He wants us to test ourselves. It's not that we do any of those things to earn God's approval we can't, but the, these are things that we will be a pattern. That doesn't mean we're always going to do it 100% correctly. We will foul up. We will make mistakes. We will sin. But you know the rest of the story from that one. So I said it's silly to light a lamp and then hide it. Um, a lamp is made to illuminate. This glorifies the Lord. You don't want to, it's crazy to think that you're going to set a lamp here on this table or any of these lights. Why would we turn these lights on and cover them all up with black paper? That is not the purpose of light. Why turn it on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that connection. Uh, and I wrote, what kinds of things can I do to glorify God in practical ways? It's one thing for us to sit here and read and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what does that mean? What does that mean for me? How can I be a light? How can I be peculiar? And then I wrote the also principle, like Rebecca. Yeah, I'll get you a drink with the servant. They think it's the liaison. Oh, yeah, let me, could I get your camels a drink also? It's called the also principle. So as believers, we need to be kinder, than necessary. People used to say of Bruce, if he saw somebody who was going to walk through that door, he would run over to the door and open that door for somebody else. I, I always heard that about Bruce, that he was such a loving, giving, caring person. He was kinder than necessary. No one would have expected Bruce to open a door for, any, for them or anybody because he was doing his own thing, but he just was that kind of guy. So... What can, and I ask myself that question, and you all can ask yourselves that question. I would suggest you put it on your light page. How can I be different? Ask yourself that, evaluate it. You're all gonna have different answers. You have different people in your life. You have different situations. But how can your, the light of Christ shine through you onto this person? What do you personally want that to look like for you? So that's what Bible study is. It's to really apply it. It's not just to read it and gain knowledge, but, okay, Lord, how's this going to change me? 
practice, how can you practice the uh, also principle? Go over and above what is expected. How many of you have jobs outside the home? It's a good place to apply it, isn't it? it is. <laughs> Go a little bit early, stay a little bit late. Do something totally that's not even on your job description. People are going to wonder. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Yeah, what, what, who does that? She was that kind of person. She was an employee, and I heard someone ask her, "Why? who benefits when you do this? Why would you do this? And they were being kind of cynical because she was doing over and above. She was practicing the also principle. You know what her answer was? I'm, I'm not thinking about my own benefit, she said. I hope there are some bywater benefits. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to always do it right. And I don't want this to be a thing of condemnation, like, oh, man, this, you know. It's going to happen. It's not anything really that you're probably already all doing it because Jesus lives in you. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying we all need to be more aware. Mm -hmm. We just need to be... <laughs> thinking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, working with the public's not easy. Yeah. Sean, I think Becky said something really important because it is reflective. Mm -hmm. um, people know that we're Christians. Mm -hmm. They should. Mm -hmm. um, and so are we, are we reflecting Christ mm -hmm. or are we reflecting the world? And I, I think that's the type of light that this is talking about is the reflective mm -hmm. light of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not our light. Mm -hmm. um, it says you are the light of the world, but that light is reflective of him. Amen. Mm -hmm. We're to be imitators of him. Not easy. Uh -huh. Out of the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says it's that in Ephesians. Mm -hmm. That's a, uh, yeah, it isn't easy no. because we get drawn in so easily and we have emotions and we get frustrated and it's easy to reflect the other way. It is. That's what you get it thrown on you so much that it just starts. And it comes natural for us. That's the first <laughs> This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Mm. John got to see this light with his own eyes, as it says in verse 2. We have seen. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. And what are the last three words that God the Father says to them? And John was put one of them. This John that we're reading about, he was one of them. He dwells, it says in verse 16, in unapproachable light. Not any of us can look on God and live. It came close for those three guys in the Mount of Transfiguration. Like, wow. But even then, they didn't see the full um, glory of God. And we sing that song, show me your glory, show me your glory. You know what? <laughs> we would die. We don't we we could not not sing his voice. And live. <laughs> That's our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Philippians 2 7 says, uh, But he emptied himself, talking about Jesus, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. We saw God through Christ. But he emptied himself. He made himself like one of us. So he could speak in our language so we could understand. He was God. But he was emptied of that. So that they could gaze upon him and see him. And follow him and listen to him. And uh, what an amazing thing God did for us. In sending us a, a human being to show us God the Father. Jesus Christ. <coughs> wow.